Hi everyone, it's Jan and I have been so touched by all of the comments that you all have, have left for me over the last few days about the mini albums that I had made for Karen and several of you have asked how I made the cover of the second book and I've written back to as many of you as I possibly could um, telling you that I would be happy to do a tutorial because that technique is my fallback technique. When I need to create something that's unique and different, I always fall back to that. I can use it to cover a book. I can make a layout background with it. And the steps are all basically the same. And you can get a lot of different looks with it. And so I'm going to show you just a couple of different things that I have done with the same technique. And then I'll be happy to show you how I do it. This is another book. This was a book cover, actually that I used and this little mini album that I have made is for a friend of mine who is a scrapbooker so I have just put blank pages in here for her to work with. She's going to be doing some traveling and so I've done a travel journal for her. And you can see they're very different looks but it's the same technique. The collage itself I just pulled together all kinds of bits and pieces. I love working with tissue paper because it becomes translucent when you put it down on the Mod Podge so you can see the depth and the layer. Book pages. I will use pieces from designer paper, pattern paper. I'll use bits and pieces of paper lace. I will use punch outs, pieces of fabric. Also when I get a gift I hold on to the, the tissue paper and I'll stamp with Versamark. You always want to use something that is a solvent ink pad because the when you're putting Mod Podge on it, if it has been just a, a dye ink it will it'll run and, and be messy. To begin with I always start by putting a coat of gesso over whatever it is that I'm going to use as my surface, particularly if I'm working with something like chipboard because it just gives me, instead of dealing with whatever the the absorbency or the, the finish is, gesso has what they call a tooth to it. It makes things easy to attached to it. Plus it gives you a nice clean surface to work with. So unless I'm wanting to incorporate what was underneath here, if it was a really cool looking book cover, I might not um, put the gesso on it. But for the most part, I always start with gesso. So I'm going to work here and I do not stop at the edge. You'll notice that I'm going to overlap and I'm going to let you just watch the process here and so you'll see the layering take place. I'm going to dry it in between things with my um, heat gun and I will stop and, and narrate some things as I think they become important. So let's just see how this comes together because you never know. I have all my bits and pieces around me and let's get started. I begin by putting a good amount of Mod Podge down. This acts both as my glue and my sealant. So I just work in the area that I am and I always put a layer of the Mod Podge over it so that whatever I layer over it can stick to it too. Okay.
that I have my cover entirely or my surface entirely covered now is when I actually add the glimmer mess or walnut ink um, spray or whatever that I want to do to add some some color to this and I do it while the Mod Podge is still wet because it gives it a very it kind of embeds the color and so there's there's depth and texture going to now use my heat tool but can you see how the color is gathering in where all the little crinkles are with the Mod Podge and the tissue paper I think that's what makes this technique give it a really cool effect so I'm going to do this and not I'm going to speed through this, not make you watch paint dry. Before I go any further, I will turn it over and I will trim not right next to the edge because I'm going to use sandpaper to, to take it all the way down to the edge. But for these, this next step, I really need to kind of have a good sense of where my edges are. So I'm just using a cup couple of flourish stamps here. The final step for a project like this where I actually am going to use the edge or use it as the cover to a book, I want to clean up this edge just a little bit. And to do that I will take sandpaper, which I'm using a Tim Holtz sanding block, but really you can just get a piece of sandpaper and do the edge. And you pull it down and just keep going until it has actually worn the edge that you can tear away. To finish it off, I will use some acrylic paint. And these are very simple to do it with if you because it has the, the foam brush on the top. I'm going to use gold on this one. The key to collage, folks, is really and truly believing you can't make a mistake that you are not going to be able to plan what it looks like. I had no idea when we started that we would end up with this, but I really like it. I think it's going to be a great cover for a mini for my friend. And I really appreciate you all asking me to do this tutorial. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send me a message or, or leave a comment because I'm happy to to answer questions and know that you don't have to use these same color combinations. If you are wanting really much lighter things, just use lighter colors. Thanks everyone. I've had a great time and I hope this helps. <laughs>